Good morning! Hi, my name is Iman and today I'm going to be explaining to you how to apply for the USMLE exams as an international medical graduate. So you want to start studying for the USMLE exams and you want to apply to book yourself a spot to either start by USMLE Step 1 or USMLE Step 2. The very first question, if I were you, that I would ask myself is why do I want to do those USMLE exams? And in my opinion, there are two routes that you can go. Route number one is you either want to do residency training or practice as a physician in the US. Route number two is that you have already done a training in your country and you want to come here for subspecialty training and you want to get more experience and expose yourself to new technologies that probably are not available where you are and then probably you want to go back to your country and practice. And so for both cases, before we go into the practicalities and the logistics of actually applying to get a spot to sit for the USMLE exams, the very first step is you have to make sure that your medical school is listed on the World Directory of Medical Schools. When you click on the link in the description box, you will see that you will have to enter your country or the city where you went to medical school and this will pull out your medical school if it is in that World Directory. This is step number one. Step number two, after you have defined your objective, which is whether you want to apply for residency or you want to apply for fellowship, you would have to start by figuring out what are the deadlines for submission to those actual specialties that you want to apply to. Step number three, you have to make a plan. Most of submissions in the US are done on a yearly basis and there is usually an open window of a couple months on average where these specialties would have their application process going on. And no matter which year you apply in, you are actually applying to start the following year if everything goes all right. And before you apply, you usually have to have done some kind of research or study for the USMLEs, which usually take quite some time, a few months on average. Figuring out the deadlines is extremely important. Number one, you can only apply once a year. The window usually opens for a few months, sometimes it's two months, for other specialties it's more or less. And so you have to get familiar with those deadlines because it is very important. You only get to apply that one window out of the year to be able to start one year later. So it is extremely important to get yourself familiarized with those deadlines because they will help you make a schedule to study for the USMLEs and also to plan your life events around it as well. So there are two platforms that you use to apply for residency. Platform number one is the SF Match, and that is the one that I'm most familiar with because I'm in ophthalmology. And you can apply for residencies of ophthalmology and plastic surgery through the SF Match. For every other residency, it's gonna have to go through ERAS, and you're gonna find links to both in the description box. For all these other specialties, it's gonna have to go through the ERAS, and you're gonna find both the links to these platforms in the description box below. Regarding fellowship, again, some fellowships are through the SF Match and some are through ERAS. And to my knowledge, those are the only platforms where you can apply, but there may be something else more. So it really is important to know what is it that you wanna apply to because the deadlines and the dates in which the submissions start are really different between one and the other. So let's say, for example, you know you wanna apply for ophthalmology. So you know it's gonna to have to go through the SF Match and you would go on the website and you would figure out the starting date and the end date of the submissions season. So let's say you want to apply to internal medicine. That would have to be through ERAS and you would go on the website and you would go on residencies and click on internal medicine and it would give you a timeline of when the submission window opens and when it ends. And that basically means that by that window of time, you should have your USMLE Step 1, USMLE Step 2, your OET exam, which is Occupational English Test. And you would also have to submit tons of other paperwork related to your medical school, to your training, to your education, as well as letters of recommendation and a personal statement. So it is quite a lengthy process and some people do it over a few weeks. So let's say you are an ophthalmologist in training in another country other than the United States. And today you decide that you wanna apply for fellowship training in the US by the time you're done with residency. So in order to do that, you would have to take the exams USMLE Step 1, USMLE Step 2, and the Occupational English Test. Since you would have to apply through the SF Match, you would go on there, you would figure out the fellowships that you wanna apply to. And in general, the submissions deadline is sometime around the end of August, beginning of September. And today, 16th of July, it doesn't make any sense that you would be able to apply this year so knowing that you can apply next year within the same window of time that gives you some kind of a timeline in which you're going to be able to organize yourself to take USMLE step one take USMLE step two take the occupational English test and then work on other aspects of your application so now that you have figured out that one your medical school is within the world directory of medical schools Two, you know whether you want to apply for residency or fellowship and preferably it's always better to know which one you want to apply to 
And three, you figure out the deadline. And so that gives you a certain amount of time. For example, let's say it's May 2023. You decide you want to apply for ophthalmology residency in the US, but the application deadline is sometime around the end of August. So you know it doesn't really make a lot of sense to apply in the same year since there is not reasonable enough time to do both USMLE Step 1, USMLE Step 2, Occupational English Test, and then work on other aspects of your application. So you would plan to apply in the window of 2024. So that means that you have from May 2023 to the end of August 2024 to check all the boxes to be eligible to apply for ophthalmology residency. So that's roughly about 14 months and I would say that this is a good chunk of time to both study for the exams and also work on your application to be able to submit by the following year. And very important to know that once you submit for the following year, if everything goes all right and you do get a position, it is for the following year. So the whole process is really a big life plan that you have to think about very wisely because it usually takes more than a couple years of one's lifetime in order to get from point A, deciding to go for the USMLEs to either apply for residency or fellowship in the US, to point B, which is actually starting a residency position or a fellowship position in the US. So the timeline is extremely important, as I may have already mentioned a few times by now. Now, let's say you decided you want to get started. So what a lot of people would tell you is that you have to start studying for the USMLE exams, but something that is really time sensitive as well. Something really important to take into consideration is that as an international medical graduate, you cannot apply for the USMLE exams directly and sit for those anytime you want. First, you have to go through a platform called ECFMG, which stands for Educational Commission for Foreigner Medical Graduates. Basically, this is like an entity that makes sure that you did indeed go through medical school, you had proper training, it double checks all the documents that you submit, and it also gives you a very, 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 very extremely important number that is gonna become your USMLE ID. This number is really important to keep because this is what is going to allow you to book all of your exams. And so the first link I put in the description box is a ECFMG process description. I highly, highly recommend that you get yourself really familiar with the whole process. It is quite a read. It's probably gonna take you a couple hours to read the whole thing, but I highly recommend that you read it or that you print it or read it on your computer or your iPad or whatever you want and really just highlight the practical aspects because it is a multi-steps process. You really wanna stay in touch with what is the next step. But in a nutshell, you would have to request for an ECFMG USMLE ID number. And in order to do that, number one step is to go on the ecfmg.org website and look for the interactive web application to request that USMLE ID. This is also a step that I highly recommend you get yourself familiarized with because before you start, you would definitely have to go to your medical school and request for a bunch of documents that are called medical school transcripts. And then you would either have to translate them immediately or maybe enter the information if you can translate it yourself and then translate them later because you will have to submit all those documents later. Another thing I recommend is that get the documents, get them translated, and put them on a drive or on your cloud or on a USB key or somewhere because you will keep needing the same documents throughout the application for both residency and for fellowship. So it is better to always have them handy and translate it to English. Once you're done with the online part of the application, which is a really lengthy process, it's gonna ask about every little information you can think of regarding yourself, your education, your achievements. Once you're done with all of that, there is a pretty much a I would say long wait period, but I'm sure that depends on your medical school. If your medical school has a lot of people that apply for positions in the US, it would be more familiarized with it and it would probably be faster than my medical school that's in Morocco. I'm not sure if anybody had done it before me in my medical school, but even if they did, the people at my medical school were not really familiarized with it. So I kind of had to walk them through every little step and they were very efficient at the end of the day, but it did take some time for them to verify my documents. And when I say for them to verify my documents, the ECFMG basically gets in touch directly with your medical school. That is, if it is on the World Directory of Medical Schools, and this is why it's really important, once they get directly in touch with your medical school, your medical school is gonna be able to verify that all the documents you submitted are actually true and legit. So I'm gonna read the description of this second step after the online part of the application that's mentioned on the ECFMG website is pretty short, but it says that the ECFMG will request status verification from your medical school via the school's preferred method. It's either electronically through the medical school web portal, it's called EMSWP, Status Verification Program, or via a paper form, Certification Statement Form 183, 
and my school actually opted for the paper form so it did take even longer because they have to mail it and it takes some time so it says that if your medical school completes status verification requests electronically you will be notified at the end of the online application process if your medical school completes status verification requests via paper form, you will be provided with the form at the end of the online application process. And actually, when I filled out all of my information, I was provided with that certification statement form 183 that I had to fill out and then some part of it my medical school had to fill out. Actually, do not really quote me on everything on this part because it's been a long time since I, I did that. But I remember that it involved a lot of mailing to my medical school and my medical school mailing back to the US. And so it really did take some time. So once your medical school verifies everything, the ECFMG will figure out whether there are some missing documents or if you're good to go. And if there are some missing documents, they will require them uh, online, of course, as outlined in the interactive web application on ECFMG. So it says here that all credentials and documentation required to complete your application must be received by the ECFMG within four weeks of the date you submit the online portion of your application or your exam application will be rejected. Meaning when you're doing the online application and you fill out everything and they're like, huh, you actually need extra documents, you have to make sure that you scan those documents and make them available to the ECFMG within four weeks. Otherwise you would have to do the whole thing all over again. And trust me, it takes quite some time and you do not wanna do that. So once all of this is done, you're provided with a number and this number is called USMLE ID. This number is extremely important and it allows you to book your exams, USMLE Step 1 and USMLE Step 2. And it's very important because once you take those exams, the ECFMG actually gets your results, make sure you are the same person who provided the documents from the medical school that the medical school verified that took step one, that passed step one, that took step two, that passed step two. And it gathers all this information. And I believe with the OET as well, which is occupational English test. And it gives you something called ECFMG certification. And this is how you are going to be able to apply for anything in the US as an international medical graduate. You need the ECFMG certification because that is the only way that those residency programs or fellowship programs are going to make sure that you are legit on all the steps of this process. So once you get that USMLE ID, you will get something called a permit to schedule your exam and it will give you a window to sit for your exam, which is, I believe, three months and you have to choose like a three months period. But that's not really fixed because you can always go back and change it if it's ever needed. And with that, you will go on ProMetric.com, which is the website where you actually register for the location and the date to take one of these exams. So step number one, we go on the world directory of medical schools, make sure that your medical school is listed on there. Step number two, do you wanna apply for a residency position or for a fellowship position? Make sure you know which residency or residencies and which fellowship positions you wanna to apply to. Figure out whether you're gonna to have to apply through ERAS or through the SF match so that you can make sure you have those deadlines for the submission window on your calendar. Then go on ECFMG and request a USMLE ID by using the interactive web application IWA. Then make sure that you're really familiar with the ECFMG overview document that goes through every single step of how to become ECFMG certified. Make sure you request all the documents that you will need for the online part of the application, which is the number one step of the whole thing. From your medical school, get all those documents, get them translated if it's needed, if they're not in English to begin with. Make sure you know if your medical school uses the electronic medical school web portal or if they do things via paper so that you can make an idea for yourself of how long this whole thing is going to take. Now, this whole process, before you actually are able to get a date to sit for your exams, whether you choose to start with step one or with step two, this is going to take a few weeks to a few months. Really, it depends on your medical school and how familiar they are with the whole thing. So I highly recommend not to procrastinate on studying until this whole thing is done because for some people it really takes up to a year. So you really want to be cautious with your expectations in terms of time. Besides, you don't really need the ACFMG certification to start studying for those exams. If you know you want to apply for anything in the US, my biggest tip is that start studying for those exams because they take a lot of time to study for, but they're worth it because once you have them, they're like a key and then you can apply to anything you want basically. I have put a thorough description of everything that I discussed today in the description box with all the links that you will need. In the next video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I studied for those exams and how you can do it too. If you're going for this path, first of all, congratulations because you are a warrior by definition. This is not for the fainted heart, but also you really and absolutely and definitely can do it. If you have been through any medical school, 
in the world you absolutely can do this it is medicine it is the same everywhere this is probably more detailed this is probably in english if you have studied medicine in a different language and this is in english this is going to be an obstacle but you can absolutely get over it i have seen and met a lot of people that had all these kinds of obstacles and they got through it and they got their exams and trust me it's doable i'll see you in the next video cheers